Hi, this is Happy Bird from happybirdsglitternest.blogspot.com and today I'm going to show you how to make these gorgeous pendant necklaces and these were made out of cheap acrylic dominoes and believe it or not they were surprisingly easy to make now this was not my original idea we have a member on my uh, Facebook page called Happy Birds Glitter Nest and the member's name is Carol Tolson she does all kinds of beautiful work and I spoke with Carol and asked her permission to do um, some pendant necklaces of my own because she made some that were just gorgeous beautiful I mean, with roses and oh you should see them um, she owns an Etsy shop by the name of Refunction Crafts and I'm going to be sure to put a link down below in the show more drop down bar as well as on my blog and I really highly encourage you to check her um, her crafts out because she does such beautiful work and everything is so reasonable you wouldn't believe it very very beautiful work and um, so I kind of uh, mimicked some of the things that she did on her uh, dominoes and some were just my little added touches and these were wooden buttons that I purchased for really cheap and um, I bought them on eBay and I'll explain more as I go along in the video and um, although I, I show you how to make this one in the video I'll give you the link to the little bird buttons as well I think that turned out really pretty and this is just scrapbooking paper and the cheap chain from China that I order hey try saying that ten times <laughs> cheap chain from China <laughs> but um, yes I really really encourage you to check out Carol's shop because she has some wonderful things in there so with that said um, I'll go ahead and get started on this video now originally I had the idea to make these into purse charms but by the time I finished I liked them so well that at the very end I decided to add chain to this and turn them into um, necklace pendants after all and I still have to add chain to these two but anyway um, so we'll get started with the tutorial okay so the first thing that I'm going to do is choose my butterfly embellishment and I buy these little button wood button butterflies off eBay and I've used a couple of different sellers they sell between $1.31 and $1.81 uh, for 50 and this is only part of my butterflies but I really like them because they they look realistic and they come in a lot of really pretty colors and although they're um, they're bright in color when I use the triple thick on these it just really makes the colors pop so that's what I'm going to be doing today now I'll be sure to post links to where I purchased my butterflies off of a couple of different sellers and I'll put it in the show more drop down bar as well as on my blog and you can also find other really pretty um, buttons just by going to eBay and typing in the words wood buttons not wooden buttons but wood buttons and you'll be amazed what pops up and one thing I've learned about uh, using these wooden buttons is that um, the colors always look so much better once I put the triple thick on and then a fine dusting of an iridescent glitter so I'll show you how um, I make these up. I always like to do my embellishments first whenever I'm making any type of craft like this that um, uh, where I have to use quite a few embellishments because I like to have them ready. So I'll, we'll do this first and um, then we'll work on the domino afterwards. So I'll choose my butterfly and we'll put it together. Okay so I chose this little butterfly here and the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make some little antennae on here. And I'm using the 20 gauge artistic wire. Now I will tell you, 
I don't recommend this gauge. I recommend a 22 gauge wire, but this is the only thing that I had in there, so I have to use this. So you're going to cut off about four inches, which I'm going to do right here. Like so. And then you're going to take your wire straighteners. It's not going to be perfect, but you can straighten it as much as you can. And if you don't have wire straighteners, that's fine. Just use a soft cloth and with your fingers in the cloth, just do this and a lot of the um, kinks will come out. Okay, so now I'm going to bend this in the middle into kind of a U shape. And I'm going to pick up this butterfly and slide the wire through the buttonholes. And when you push it in, it kind of automatically crosses like that. Now I'm going to hold this like so. And I'm going to take a pair of my flat nose pliers. Just push this down gently in the middle. And like I said, I would use a 20, uh, 22 gauge wire, not a 20 gauge. Give it a, a twist around and then just gently push this forward. And I'm going to flatten this, but I'm not going to press hard. I don't want to break the wood butterfly. I'm just going to give it a couple of gentle squeezes to kind of flatten everything out. Okay. So these look fairly even at the top, so I don't need to nip anything off. Then I'm going to take my round nose pliers and I'm just going to start making a loop starting at the smallest point of my um, round nose pliers. Then I'm going to slip it in and like so. Now once it gets to this point, I'm going to come in like this and keep rolling. And I'm not an expert, as you can see, but I'm just doing the best I can. And don't worry if it looks a little funky because you can flatten this out with your round nose pliers. And that's supposed to be a little whimsical anyway. So I'm starting out with the very tip, turning it like this, and then going back in like this. And with 22 gauge wire, it will be a lot more flexible than the 20 gauge, so it'll be a little easier for you. see what we have. There we go. Alright. So I'm going to flatten these out. And there we go. So the next thing that we're going to do, we're going to use some triple thick. I'm just going to grab a toothpick for this. I'm going to hold this by the antennae so I can just swirl my toothpick around in here. And you're going to put some triple thick right over the wire here in the middle. And I'm just making sure that it's 
that it um, runs all the way to the edge here and if you notice I'm not being um, I'm not putting a thin coat it's a fairly generous coat because I want it to dome a little bit at the top because as this dries it shrinks a little bit anyway so I just want to make sure all the edges are covered. All right. And so next we're going to take some ultra fine glitter. You can really use any ultra fine glitter as long as it's an iridescent color. This is by Stamping Up. It's called Dazzling Diamonds. You can also use the Recollections brand of ultra fine glitter in Glitz. And as you can see, I'm barely taking a pinch, holding it up high, and just sprinkling a little bit on here, just enough to make it look um, a little like fairy dust. Just a little at a time. You don't want to cover it. You just want a touch of it. Now this is German glass glitter. And I'll put the link in the Show More drop-down bar below this video, as well as on my blog as to where I got it. It was very reasonable. And I'm just putting a tiny bit on, on the wings, not in the middle. We want to leave the middle um, free without any German glass glitter because we're going to use this this little two millimeter AB chain and I can also put a link as to where I got this and we're going to cut three links off this chain And then I'm going to take my little Dollar Tree tweezers here. These tweezers were in the tool section and they came three to a package, but the ends of the tweezers were all a little different. So I'm just going to tap this in the middle. And this is why we don't want any German glass glitter in the middle of the butterfly, only on the wings because I want to make sure that um, it had a flat surface so I could stick this on. Alright, so now it, it looks a little murky because we just put um, the triple thick on, but once this dries it'll look like beautiful clear glass. So I'm going to allow this to dry and it's best if you allow it to dry overnight. I like to make up my embellishments ahead of time and that way I have everything ready to go when I put together my dominoes. So I'll go ahead and set this aside and we'll allow that to dry overnight. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need is some children's dominoes and you know get the inexpensive kind that are really lightweight acrylic and I think I picked this up at Toys R Us a little while ago for couple of dollars it was in the party section and I know that um, Dollar Tree carried dominoes too so just look in the toy section and um, you know where the games are and you can either pick up black or white it doesn't matter so what I like to do first is I like to take a piece of double-sided tape and I'm just going to stick it right here on the front where the dots are. Just like that for a moment. Okay. And then you're going to choose some scrapbooking paper. I bought this beautiful stack of um, scrapbooking paper at Joann's and it was $20 for the stack and I paid $7 because I had coupons. And the stack was called um, Mariposa and it's so beautiful. In fact, at the very end of this video, I'll show you the stack and go through the papers with you, but it is so pretty. 
and I really loved it. Now if you're buying open stock scrapbook paper, my advice to you would be to try to find a print that is very small and very close together because you want as much detail as possible on your domino uh, because it is so very small you'll need the the small print um, to really make it look pretty so I have a little piece of that scrap right here and as you know we put the tape right here double-sided tape on the domino so I'm going to hold this above my lamp with a domino behind so I can kind of see where I want to place my domino that will look the prettiest um, using this print and if you don't have a lamp you can have someone hold a flashlight while you move things around like this and decide where you want it or you can hold it up to a window where there's bright light so I'm just going to hold this up here and I think this looks pretty good right about here I think yeah I think that would look really pretty so I'm going to press this down right here and now I can take my precision scissors you want the kind that are sharp right here with the with the beveled cut right here at the very tip and just carefully lay your precision scissors along the side of the domino and cut and the reason why I like doing it this way is I was getting a little frustrated trying to trace around this with my mechanical pencil because my domino no matter how hard I tried kept sliding around so I finally said the heck with it there has to be a better way so I think this looks good so I'm going to peel this off gently and then I'm going to lay this down and find the tape to hope oh, it's still on here <laughs> find the tape and just gently peel it off like this Okay, so the next thing you're going to do is take a, an 18 karat gold leafing pin or a metallic gold paint pin and shake it up. And I'm just going to wipe the edges with it all the way around. And just make sure that it's completely dry before we go on to our next step. Just going to go all the way around the edges. Try not to touch it. Okay, so we want this thoroughly dry before we go on to the next step. So be very careful. Like so. So I'm just gonna lay it down and put this cap on. Okay, so I'm going to allow this to dry for about 30 minutes and then we'll come back and I'll show you the next step. Okay, so now this is completely dry, so we're going to take our triple thick and our toothpick and we are going to put some on here, on the top, and you can use a brush if you want, but I'm just doing it this way. Just make sure you get the edges and you want a fairly generous amount on here. You want it to dome a little bit. Because this does shrink a little bit as it dries. 
I'm going to make sure that this is covered in the corners as well. And I'm going to let this dry overnight. If you want to, you can put a fan on low and put this a distance away from the fan and it will help it to dry. I'm going to also add some more of <clears throat> Stampin' Up! Dazzling Diamonds and just put a little bit on like this just enough to make it glimmer and then I'm going to add um, a tiny bit of glass glitter but I'm not going to put any on the top or any on the bottom I'm just going to put a little bit here in the middle and not enough to it'll look really pretty but it, it's just the smallest amount as you can see just the tiniest amount it's just enough to give it a little tiny shimmer. Now you don't have to do this part with a glass glitter. Um, you can also just use the ultra fine glitter here on this part and it'll work equally as well. But I think that the German glass glitter gives it that extra little sparkle. So now I'm going to allow this to dry completely and um, after it does that then I'll come back and we'll do the rest. Okay, as you can tell, this is completely dry. So we will be wrapping this beautiful two-row rhinestone chain around the domino. And we're going to use E6000 and a toothpick to do this. And we're just going to do it a little at a time. And I'm just going to take a little bit of this and put this right here at the top. And then I'm going to put some here down the side. All the way down here. Okay. And then I'm just going to take the chain and put this right here and you, if you can see right here where it bends that's that's how you want the corners you want it to bend right there and then keep on going around and you can square this off by doing this all right, so now I'm going to hold that and with my pinky, <laughs> I'm going to squeeze a little bit more of this glue out and put this on the top and right here where that bend is, I'm going to just go like that and then of course right here we're going to make that bend here and we're going to go all the way down. So I'm going to hold this because I don't want that chain to slip out of place. And just go all the way down to the end here. Right there. This chain is very flexible, which is really nice. And so I'm going to cut it off about here with my wire cutters. There. Now I'm going to lay it down and kind of square it off. And then like so. 
there we go so it has this beautiful chain all the way around the side and then at the very bottom I'm going to place this right about there just a couple of rows there so I think I'll cut it about here So then I'm going to take a little more of this E6000, oh, not too much, don't want too much, and then just here across the bottom, that's what we want. I can take my little Dollar Tree scissors. This where I want. These tweezers are a cheap little tool at three for a dollar, but you know they come in pretty handy. Okay, so we have it. It looks like this. All right. So now I'm going to allow that to completely dry and um, give it at least, I'd say, well, at least 12 hours before you pick it up and we start doing additional things to this. So next we're going to glue on the bales and we'll allow that to dry. So there's, there's drawing time in between, but if you're patient, it will be well worth it. So we're going to allow this chain to dry, and then we'll be back. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to glue some bales, these little bales, on the back, at the bottom, and at the top. And so I'm going to take my E6000. I'm just going to take a little bit of this, my toothpick, and these are small bales. I'll have the link for you um, in the Show More drop down bar as to where I purchased these bales, as well as on my blog. But please know, you know, this isn't the only place that you can find bales um, on my link, of course. You can also go to eBay or Etsy and just type in the words glue on bales. Be sure to use the words glue on. Now I'm going to be looking at the chain and kind of measuring about where this should be from there. Just like so. I'm just going to tap it fairly lightly. I'm not going to press it down because I don't want all of that E6000 to be, you know, running outside of the bale. <clears throat> you can use larger bales if you'd like, but I'm out of medium size bales. Putting a little hot glue. All I have are really small or fairly large. <laughs> so. The hot glue just kind of holds it into place while the E6000 dries. So I'm just going to lay it there. And it's probably good if you let that dry at least 12 hours before picking it up. And I know there's a lot of drying time in between, but I do it that way because um, oh, oh, <laughs> something else I was working on. Um, I do it that way because I want to make sure everything has a tight hold and that everything is is cured, you know, the glue before moving on to the next step. Nothing is worse than giving someone 
something you made and have it fall apart, right? Okay, so we'll let this dry for about 12 hours and we'll come back and we'll put on the charms and um, the uh, keychain and then we'll go from there. I almost forgot. <laughs> I have to glue this on. So we put the bales on, but I also want to put this on at the same time. So let's get some E6000 here and put it right across here, like, like so. And I'm going to put it right about here in the corner. Okay, now I'll let this dry, and then we'll be back. Okay, so for the next part, we're just going to add our little um, little dangles to the bottom here. And I just used the jump rings here on this necklace chain. Now, not all of them open on all the chains. Some of them you would have to cut, and so I don't use those. But these you could open with flat nose pliers, and um, they're nice and strong. And I think I bought this chain at either Michael's or Joann's. I'm not too sure which, but um, anyway, you can use you can look in your stash if you don't have jump rings to see if you have any necklace chain that um, will come open like this for you. And so what I did was I made this little bead dangle thingy and I'm going to give you a link to my friend Crafty's channel. It's down below in the show more drop down bar as well as on my blog. She has a very simple, easy to follow um, tutorial on how to make bead dangles, various kinds, so I'll be sure and give that to you, that info. Okay, so next I'm going to put on this little love heart, and I bought this at Michael's. It was in a package hanging up. It was a package full of charms. And I'll give you the link to this charm that I bought. It's a beautiful bright silver. I got 10 of them for $1.79 plus free shipping on eBay. And it says, you are always in my heart, and it has the exact same thing on the back too, which is really nice. Because most of the time, you'll find hearts like this with things written on it on the front, but not on the back as well. So I was really happy when I saw that. That was something I didn't expect. And this is a little key. Now if you're going to use this size heart, I would find a key that is no more than 27 millimeters tall and then you'll be doing okay balancing all of the rest of this stuff out. So this is what we have so far and I would really like to see this side of it. There we go. Yeah, oh, it says love. So I'm going to hold on to this and slip this through and then try to close it the best I can. I grab onto this, I don't want it to fall. And then just close it like this. I had to be careful with this one because this jump ring was almost a little too small for this to, you know, manipulate my flat nose pliers, but it worked out fine. So this is what we have so far. And I'll, um, we're going to put, I think, a um, key ring on this to use this as a purse charm. You can certainly use a necklace in here, get the little stringy things off. 
and make this into a beautiful pendant necklace but I'm just turning it into a beautiful purse charm today so let me go get the key ring okay well I started to get the key rings but I changed my mind I really love this and I want to wear it as a long pendant so I just slipped this chain through the little bale here and I just added a little lobster claw to the end and I just slipped it on to the end of this chain and then you can hook it just like that and I love the look of the mixed metals at one time I thought all the metals had to match but I'm really liking the look of these mixed metals lately I think it turned out really pretty so be sure to check out Carol uh, Tolson's Etsy page she has some really beautiful things and I really encourage you to check her out and I'll like I said before I'll be sure to put a link in the drop down bar below as well as on my blog and I did promise you uh, to show you the paper stack I bought called Mariposa and so I'm going to be doing this right now at the very end of the video so for those of you who want to stay tuned in look at the uh, stack of papers that I bought then you can do that and those of you who don't um, thank you so much for watching and God bless each and every one of you take care bye bye okay so here's the stack I was telling you about and I thought it was so pretty and even the, the outside cover has these beautiful sparkly butterflies and that you could cut out when you're finished with the stack as well as up here and you can add them to tags or cards but I wanted to show you the inside first and I hope I can do this justice with this camera but it's so pretty and it has all these beautiful sparkles on this paper these are butterflies with with gold in between I don't know if you can see it so pretty and of course you get two sheets and this is just absolutely gorgeous isn't that pretty with all the sparkles look at that it's amazing and then have this beautiful sheet and then this pretty sheet look at that isn't that pretty? I hope I can I hope you can see everything I know it's kind of shadowed here and then this is a beautiful print with the little butterflies and then we have this lovely print as well pretty too. Nice quality paper. This is a real pretty, but it kind of reminds me of a retro print. Let me get two of these of course as well. And some more beautiful gold line butterflies. A lot of sparkly paper in this one. So pretty. This is gorgeous paper. Oh, and I love this too. Wouldn't these make some beautiful tags or bookmarks? Really lovely. Get two of those. Everything in here is just so gorgeous. And of course, this is what I use for um, my little um, pendant that I showed you. And there was two of these in here too. I just didn't put the second one back that I cut and this is a gorgeous page with all this gilded gold beautiful everything is just so lovely and then this has a picture of 
bird here in the corner. It's kind of a tight area that I'm showing this to you in. But, and this is more gilded gold. This page. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, and this is beautiful too, and it has just the slightest hint of gold in these butterflies. And this papers, oh, this is pretty. This is in the red. This looks similar to the other one. Isn't that gorgeous? So much glitter and gold in this stack. More lovely gold. So pretty. And then these are like gold little, uh, well, I think they're supposed to be maybe butterfly cages, but they look like bird cages to me. And then this is just plain, plain paper right here, <laughs> cardboard. <laughs> so um, I hope you enjoyed this. You get 48 sheets in this stack. I got this at Joann's. It was regular $20, and by the time I used my coupons and then the extra discount, it only ran me $7. Can you believe it? And it was the last Mariposa stack there because everybody of course was grabbing them but um, if you ever get a chance to go to Joann's and you look in the paper section where they have the stacks I would highly suggest checking this out because this is so pretty I really love it and I have plans for this and I hope they work out so <laughs> all right well you take care and God bless each and every one of you bye bye